And the Make Canada Great Again, that's where we're, we've got to start today because it's so ridiculous. It is almost parody. Like how many people can get behind a prime minister who doesn't want to make their country great? Like if you don't want to make the country great, great then please don't run the country because making the country great for its citizens, making the country great for people who visit legally, making the, pe the country great for people to grow up in, making the country great is your job. It is your job, man, aside from protecting the rights and the agreement between the governed and the government, right? Like it's your job. That's what you should be doing. You should be maximizing your trade deals for the betterment of you and probably for the betterment of the people that you're selling your product to, right? Like if you go into Bell or wherever you get your internet, right? Bell is just one thing or wherever you get your phone or whatever it is, right? You go into a company and they sell you a product. You want to be happy with the product. You give them money and they give you the product and you want to be happy with the product, right? And you feel good about it because you're getting that thing that you wanted and you feel like you're paying a good price for it, right? And you're okay to pay it every month. Month, and Bell becomes a multi-billion dollar company and their, their execs get really big fat salaries because fundamentally the product that you buy is acceptable to you to pay that money for. So why can't Canada do that for the products that we make, make it easy for us to make these things and then sell these things on the international stage like LNG? Oh, what's that LNG people? You want a pipeline to sell your stuff faster so you can make money faster? Like, great. Yeah, we'll build you that pipeline. Let's get it done in a year. Wait, that creates jobs for people and it creates jobs for indigenous people and it creates agreements and money for indigenous communities all along the pipeline and so on and so on and so on. There's a win-win here. Why don't they see this? Make Canada great again is your job, but not according to Justin Trudeau. Here he is. Justin Trudeau, being a complete and utter potato-faced imbecile. Here we go. Mr. Speaker, what we hear from the leader of the opposition is uh, under the previous Conservative government, everything was perfect. And what he is proposing to do is to make Canada great again. That is not what Canadians want. He is pining for a nostalgia that, quite frankly, Canadians do not feel. They remember what he did as part of Stephen Harper's failed housing minister. He remembers the people who the rights of individual ind uh, Indigenous peoples violated. Uh, the uh, ignoring of environmental responsibilities and the lack of an environmental and economic plan for the future. We're going to continue. Weak, weak, weak. You see what I'm saying? Like usually it's, he's snappier than that. That was as weak as I've ever heard him. And oh, nobody wants to make Canada great again. No Canadians are pining for that nostalgia of a well-run government that, you know, delivered a product any product really like here's a passport here's a you know update of whatever paperwork or whatever you need here's a freedom of information request now i'm not saying the harper government was perfect they weren't obviously because harper signed us up for the 2030 agenda right like he signed that in 2015 am i wrong um, but all of that before he passed over to justin trudeau right before he passed leadership on to justin trudeau that was signed earlier in the year but fundamentally if you don't want to make canada great don't be the prime minister of canada if you don't think Canada is great already, and it just, I mean, with a little bit of sane management, like we wouldn't even, we wouldn't need to pay taxes. I remember being jealous. Jealous isn't the right world. I remember being vaguely aware of how well Alberta did as a province that they didn't have uh, PST, they didn't have provincial sales tax. And the GST was, I think, 6% or 7%, 7%, 6% at times. Um, and Ralph, I remember the end of Ralph Klein's reign and like those were some good times in Alberta. And I remember thinking like, what's the, why, why don't we have in Ontario? Aren't we in a, like, don't we have a lot of riches, et cetera, et cetera. And it seems like just mismanagement, right? And where, where do we send our, all of our funds? Well, Ukraine, of course, because <laughs> we're, we give loans to businesses that are struggling, but we give f absolutely money strings free, right? No expectation of repayment. Here you go. Here's some cash. We just thought you might want some cash the Ukraine. People are responding to this whole do, don't make Canada great again by making make Canada great again trend on Twitter. So that's interesting. Cricket's live matter, Cricket Lives Matter says um, it is. Well, Sean Richards says Trudeau just said out loud in the House of Commons, Canadians don't want to make Canada great again. Um, and Cricket says, yes, it is what Canadians want. We certainly do not want to live in your delusional world. Can you seriously imagine saying Canadians don't want to make Canada great again? What? That's literally what he just said. Clearly, he's dipping into his safe supply. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, moving on. Uh, I think that it is 
super interesting that he couldn't articulate the end of his argument. He just kind of blathered on about random things. There was no coherent punch at the end. There was nothing really. It, his the speaker interrupted him. Your time's up, sir. Like stop talking. <laughs> and the and the liberals didn't barely clap. So it was very very interesting to me uh, because what a stupid thing to say. Moving on, here's uh, Pierre Polyev. And this is a little long, but I think we have to watch it all because the, the news is really badgering him. The reporters are badgering him. I think this is going to be the right volume, um, but I'll try and adjust it as best I can. The news reporters here are badgering him for an answer on, do you support Danielle Smith and her proposed limitations on uh, mutilating children and starting them and sterilizing them with cross-sex hormones? And he actually brings up the sterilizing them and a couple of other things that I, I was surprised to see him push back as strongly as he is. And if that's his stance, good for him. So here we go. Do you support age restrictions for puberty blockers and hormone therapies for trans kids? Um, I think that uh, Justin Trudeau is trying to divide and distract Canadians by spreading disinformation about uh, the decisions that premiers and parents are making. I see. When he said that, I thought, man, he's going to dodge. He's going to dodge big time. And sorry, that was too loud, but uh, we're going to keep going. Um, I thought big dodge coming, right? But he doesn't. He reengages and really, really makes news. Here we go. What do you think? What do you think? I want to know your position. What do you think? party policy. It's your own party policy. At party convention. I think we should protect the rights of parents to make their own decisions. What does it mean? With regards to their children. And I believe that adults should have the freedom to make any decision they want about their bodies. But minor but children ban surgeries and medical interventions for minors as your own party members suggested. Medical sir. interventions like what? The, that, it, that is the language that your party What medical used. interventions? Well, well you would have to ask your party members. members. What medical such interventions? As medical, uh, such as puberty blockers and hormone replacement. For minors? Yeah. Yes. Irreversible? Yeah. You're talking yeah. about irreversible? I, 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 I don't like to understand you. I want to be clear. No, I want to be clear. I want to be clear. Puberty blockers for minors? Yes. Do you agree with that? Do you agree yeah. with that? I think that we should protect children what and their ability mean? to make adult decisions when they're adults. So you think only adults should make the... You said yes? Just just to be clear, you said yes, only adults should take puberty blockers? I think we should protect children, let them make adult decisions when they become adults. So that means you support age restrictions. You are against puberty blockers for kids under the age of 18. Is that is that clear? Okay. What about... Can I ask you about... Uh, in Alberta. By the way, I just want to make another comment on this. Justin Trudeau is again puffing out his chest, trying to divide Canadians and attack parents who are trying to protect their kids. He will, in the end, back down on this, just like he had to back down on his firearms policy, just like he had to back down on bringing in medical assistance and dying for people suffering from mental illness. Just like he's backing down again and again and again, he will back down on this because he is not interested in protecting kids. He's interested in using this as a divisive wedge to distract from doubling housing costs and quadrupling carbon taxes on our people. But it's for you. So that's trying to reframe the conversation. So he answered the question. And then he says, now that that question's answered, I want to focus on this thing because Justin Trudeau is trying to use this issue to distract from this issue. I think that it's a valid point. I don't think that he's incorrect. However, the sex and gender issue is its own right, in its own right, a very third rail issue. It is a very hot button issue right now in Canada in its own right, just as hot as the housing market, just as hot as the economy, just as hot as all of the other issues, because they are trying to make us accept a false reality. And I'm glad to see him pushing back. Now, I got it wrong. I thought he said to like that sterilizes them, but he said irreversible. And I thought that was, I thought that was really, I mean... That kind of language and the way he, he, it looked genuine. His facial expression when he was responding to the, to the reporter um, about puberty blockers, like irreversible for minors, like, no, like that's not something that we're going to support. So it, it seems sane. Now, hopefully he doesn't walk that back. I've seen Doug Ford come out with sane sounding policies and then a day later walk them back, right? Um, oh, we didn't actually mean that. We'll... It was with COVID stuff. There was a whole bunch of things that were happening during that time that Doug Ford said, oh, yeah, that's not going to happen, and then walked it back. Regardless of all of that, I think that it's interesting. It seemed genuine. And I, I don't know if I agree fully with trying to pivot from the gender stuff back to the economy. 
sure you're going to win the election on the economy and Justin Trudeau is going to attack on gender. So it makes sense for him to pivot that way. It makes sense to change the conversation and control it. It's him controlling the dance there. Okay, so the reporters weren't in control. He reframed the conversation and took it into a different direction rather than dwell on this. I've given the answer. Now we're talking about things that are going to win me the election rather than dwell on this thing that is actually an edge for Justin Trudeau. Right. You see. So strategically for Polyev, that's the right move. And that's good for him. Um, And like it's not easy to recognize when you're in a scrum like that. So he's very astute and he's obviously prepping like he is having he is having people come in and doing mock Um, press conferences and things with questions that are designed to trip him up or get him talking about things that strengthen Trudeau and you saw him click it because like if you prep you start you start feeling out triggers like when I'm when I'm getting into the weeds on something or when I'm when I'm helping my opponent rather than helping myself and he stopped answered the question and reframed it and moved, right? And moved to something that helps him. So like he is prepping and the reason I know that is because of, of his behavior there. So like it's good because it looks like he cares enough to do that at least, right? Uh, O'Toole never did. O'Toole never did. He got caught off guard every single time, every time. And he didn't have anything prepped, ready to go, right? He didn't reframe He didn't reframe anything. He was very from the hip. And, and that showed as well in his poor responses. He wasn't prepped. Here is the, the as soon as they got the um, clip that Polyev was against puberty blockers. The article was already written. They just printed it. Nicole is sharing this one exactly as Polyev states. The entire trans debate has been pushed to the forefront to distract from the main issue. Trudeau quadrupling the carbon tax and Canadians barely being able to afford groceries or housing any longer. But the newspaper is focusing on the trans stuff. Um, and it's just, it's a hit piece. Um, I don't know that I even really need to read it. But I wanted I wanted to illustrate how it's a hit piece, but I'll, we'll get there in just a second. Trudeau's responding to Polyev's whole thing, and I want to look at that first. So tr- here's Trudeau's response. And of course, he is making political hay. As I said, this is a strength for Trudeau. And the way he frames it as, you know, we're, we're going to protect children and stuff. It's nonsense. Of course, it's nonsense. Okay, this is probably going to be too quiet. Here we go. It, the fact that Premier Smith and... Uh, Pierre Polyev want government to take away the option for parents and their vulnerable youth in consultation with their doctors to make the right decisions for them is anchored in ideology and is not about protecting the most vulnerable. Our government will do whatever it takes to protect the most vulnerable. You meant yeah. Cutting off healthy sex organs to pretend that they can fly, excuse me, pretend that they can change gender, it's the same thing. They're equivalent. You can't fly if somebody cuts off your legs, and you can't become a girl if somebody cuts off your healthy sex organs, and you can't become a boy if somebody cuts off your breasts, right? Uh, It's just not going to happen. Sorry, you're going to be a male that has a mutilated penis, or you're going to be a female with mutilated breasts, because that's the sad reality of this situation. It doesn't change, it doesn't magically change you. You become a patient for life. It's not helpful, it's very harmful. So, Justin, Trudeau using that nice flowery language really kind of glosses over the the stark reality of this. And I'm trying to use very plain language. I'm trying to use language that they, these people don't use because they're trying to confound people with language, right? Oh, we're going to protect the vulnerable. Well, you're actually, it's very predatory what the government is doing and, and the ideology that the government is selling. Nobody can change the gender. Nobody can. Um, maybe when you're an adult, if you want to dress as a woman and like Mrs. Doubtfire backslash tootsie it up, although the there are moral questions in both of those movies <laughs> should you fool all of your coworkers into thinking you are a different person just because they're discriminating against men like <laughs> and or the missed out fire thing is even more morally questionable right this is a kids movie <laughs> I digress, right? But if that's what you want to do as an adult, I mean, I've been in bars where there was, there were men dressed up as women. I watched Crocodile Dundee when I was a kid and there were men dressed up as women. If that's something that you want to do, then I'm not going to tell you that you can't do that. I believe in freedom. But at the same time, don't go telling kids that if you cut off your, your, your penis and testicles, that you become a woman. That is false. And and actually going through and cutting off the penis and testicles, like that used to be criminal, right? Like, oh, well, we're real sorry about that. Best we could do, kid that's enough? <laughs> what? It's insanity. It's absolutely insanity. So um, anyway, here's the CTV News article talking about how Polyev is against using pu- puberty blockers for children. Um, and they say as Polyev sides with Smith. And so they've positioned Smith as a bad guy on the gender ideology thing. So Polyev siding with Smith is, is stacked as a negative. Um, um, on trans restrictions, former conservative candidate says he's playing with fire. They brought in 
in order to prove that Polyev's a bad guy, they brought in a conservative candidate, the first transgender conservative candidate under who else? O'Toole, right? Yeah, so wild. This is absolutely slam dunk. Obviously, Pierre Polyev's out of touch. Ha. Siding with Alberta Premier Danielle Smith on her proposed restrictions on transgender youth. Actually, he goes further than Smith and actually has a sane answer. Kids under 18 shouldn't have access to any of that kind of stuff. Back to this. Or puberty blockers and, and surgeries. Back to this. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev confirmed Wednesday that he is against... Confirmed. We suspected, but he confirmed it on Wednesday. <laughs> that he is against trans and non-binary minors using pu puberty blockers. Trans is nothing more than mental illness. Non-binary doesn't exist. That, that, that doesn't exist. You're male or female, sir. You have X or Y chromosomes. This is real. You can't just wave that. You can't hand wave that away, right? Oh, I'm non-binary. Yeah, okay. All right, dude. Sure you are. Um, his position on the issue was swiftly met with pushback from his political opponents. Okay, positioning. Everybody's pushing back on this. Um, who accused him of trying to take away Canadians' rights, members of the trans community and their families who expressed the importance of access to affirming care, m mutilating healthy sex organs, and a former federal conservative candidate who accused the party of selling out the transgender community. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Facing a series of questions from reporters on Parliament Hill about his stance on gender-affirming medical care for children, Polyev said, in his view, no one under the age of 18 should be allowed to use hormone therapies that help delay puberty-related development for, under, for gender reassignment purposes. I think we should protect the rights of parents who make their own decisions with regards to their children, and I believe that adults should have the freedom to make any decision they want to about their bodies. Well, see, and I don't think that you have any, you don't, I don't think that you have the right to make any decision you want to about your bodies. If you say, cut this hand off, this hand is not my hand, right? I don't know where this thing came from, but cut this off me. I want a bionic hand. And if somebody sold you a bionic hand and they were like, it'll do everything, it'll, you know, it'll wax things fast and it'll, you know, it'll be a hair dryer like a go-go gadget hand. Like it'll be amazing, right? And then, you know, you wake up from the surgery and like you have a hook, right? Or you don't have a hand, like there's nothing there. And you're like, well, hey man, like I was looking forward to the Luke Skywalker style bionic hand and I noticed it's a stump and it's quite a bloody stump actually too. It looks kind of a half done surgery. What's up? And they say, oh, well, don't be a, don't be an anti-hander. Right. And then like, and then you're stuck, right? Nobody will believe you because they're like, oh, well, I'm, I can't wait till I get my bionic hand surgery. And you're like, don't, don't look what happens. And then people are like, oh, I can't, don't come at me with negativity. I can't handle it. Like what? This is insane, right? Like it's insane. It's insane to use this kind of language because it's not true. It's just completely round the bend bonkers. It's lying. It's absolutely lying. Um, so anyway, regardless, moving on. <laughs> moving on, let's talk about the protests. Now there are protests that are going on around the world, Ireland and um, other places in Europe are rising up and I've got some news. Apparently the EU has completely given in to the truckers or excuse me, the farmers and and they've rescinded a bunch of the things that have caused this strike and so they're hoping to cool it all down right um and but i it's interesting because i'm seeing more and more people ask questions like this in canada and the question is from naya and she says any lawyers or constitutional experts want to weigh in what avenue would a citizen group take to withhold taxes due to the neg negligence and corruption of its government. They have a fiduciary duty and have not met or fulfilled any of the expectations they ind indicated. Anyone? And so people respond. Um, this person's talking about them not being able to pay back taxes in the required time, so filing uh, uh, a request to waive the penalty. And so they had 20 days to pay. They requested like a, a delay and the request is going to take eight months to respond right so like if you do want to do a tax revolt there's going to be a lag time between the time that you start your tax revolt and the time that the government realizes that you're in a tax revolt there's like an eight month lag time but this guy wants to pay his taxes just not in the time frame they want and he wants a, a delay right and so and, and to waive some of the fees and things and like it's going to be eight months right so this is not getting resolved before the end of the tax year this year, right? Like, so that's problematic, problematic, probably, right? Like, so uh, Adrian says the EU has surrendered to the farmers. No restrictions will be implemented. More land can be used. Unrealistic pesticides quotas reversed, and you won't be told to eat less meat anymore. This is how world hunger is solved by farmers standing up and saying no. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know that this is a full win yet. Um, uh, there are people already expressing skepticism that this is this is the end. Like it seems like it's almost too easy, right? Like 
um, oh, there's there's tons of movies where like the hero kills the bad guy and it's like super easy and everybody's kind of standing around like, well, that was unexpectedly easy. Like how come, why, why does it seem like there should be more here? Like we've got to, we've still got to go and kill the heart of the beast, right? Like that can't be it. Like, and then you find out that it's way, way more difficult than they initially anticipated. And that was just like a foot soldier. That's what I feel like we're at right now, right? Like, hmm, that was, that, that wasn't exactly the, the uh, the win that I expected. But if it is a win, I'll take it. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. One of the reasons I'm skeptical is this. Here's what's happening in Ireland. This is a minute long. I think it's well worth our time. I, I tr I'll try not to blow out your speakers again. Um, here is, this, this guy's got an Irish accent, but I think he's very uh, understandable. And He's talking about safety in Ireland and housing and immigration and all the rest of it. Um, and I think that it's, I, I think that it's interesting that these kind of protests are analogous to the, to the farming protests because what's happening, it's all the same policies wound up together, right? So these guys are protesting all of that. Um, here we go. We don't feel safe in our country. People are getting stabbed in broad daylight. This is not a safe country anymore. Why? Because when you commit a crime, you are given deportation papers, but it's up to you to leave. It's up to you to leave. You're not escorted out of here. If certain people hadn't been escorted out of this country, there wouldn't have been kids stopped on the street. And all I care about are the women and the children in this country. And I will. Listen, when I was a kid, my mother used to tell me the truth will set you free. And the lies that they are telling us about what's going on to our people and, and what we have to put up with. I'm going to leave it at this, guys. Ireland, enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Right? So people are, are riled up. And later that day, RMTV says, um, well, Stacy says they did this to us in Ottawa. It must be said after a successful and peaceful demonstration in Dublin, right, where Irish were standing saying enough is enough, enough is enough. The scenes of Guardi police corralling protesters into a confined narrow areas to batter and arrest them is akin to political policing in North Korea. The Guardi are pension slaves for the regime, the most corrupt criminal cartel in Ireland. I was saying how I missed the days of having the Hells Angels, right? Because at least then the police were mostly on your side, right? <laughs> Yowza. Let's talk Putin because, I mean, if we're in Ireland, well, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump over to Russia, right? <laughs> if you're in a plane, it's very, very quick. Quick, I hear, I guess. Um, <laughs> the European Union is reportedly seeking sanctions and a travel ban against Tucker Carlson over his interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. So it begins. And so this is Tucker Carlson could face sanctions over Putin interview. So they don't want him traveling. They don't want him moving. They want him like shut it down, right? Elon Musk is responding to this. Brian is again pointing this out. The European Union is seeking sanctions and a travel ban against Tucker. And Elon Musk says, if true, this would be disturbing and Indeed, one may agree with Tucker or not, but he is a major American journalist and such an action would greatly offend the American public. It's interesting, right? Interesting. Here is uh, some artwork, right? Vladimir Putin, Tucker Carlson in the octagon, right? Dana White will referee. It'll be great. February 8th, 6 p.m. Um, no, the, the interview is announced or is dropping this evening. However, transcripts have already made it out. I'll read them in just a minute. Uh, actually, I guess I'll read them now. It makes more sense to read it now. Um, here is some of the transcript and which is the one I wanted to highlight. There was a couple I thought were funny. Hold on. All right. Here's, here's just a few that I thought were good. And then, I mean, it's so it's all of it's probably good, but first question is what would you tell the people running America? And he says, our message is Russia is not your enemy. We don't want war. We're ready for peace. Your leaders seek conflict. This is not what we want. Russia stands for its own people. We do not want what is not ours. And he asks if he would visit Washington. And Putin says, yeah, he's been before and he'd love to go. And he would go if he was invited. And then Tucker says, what's your opinion of President Biden? And Putin says, we're convinced he's not running the country. Let's say we have good sources that confirm that that." Confirm that, but it's plain for anyone to see for themselves. The U.S. has now entered into a dark period. It has unaccountable leadership. 
Tucker says, do you think Joe Biden won fair and square? Putin says, I would rather not get into the domestic American politics, but will say my embassy reported your southern border was better run than the 2020 election. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Tucker says, one poll in America shows you are more popular than Joe Biden. Any reactions? Putin laughs. I don't know if that should be taken seriously, but Russian ideals have support. We believe in traditional values, marriages between a man and a woman. Men are men and women are women. Tucker says, who would you like to see as the next president of the United States? Putin says, once again, it's not for us to say or get involved. Contrary to longstanding accusations, we do not meddle in your elections. We do not need to because the same people end up running things anyway, right? Ooh, Putin, the same people who? Tucker says, why did you invade Ukraine? And Putin says, did we invade or were we invaded? Look at the history. Look at the people living there. Historically, it's we who were invaded and are simply fighting back now. The land, the lands and the people are Russian and we will have again what was always ours. So um, very interesting. And I'm going to watch it tonight, probably doing dishes. I got lots, I've, I've got lots of interesting things to watch tonight while doing dishes. This I thought was interesting. Uh, Juanita Broderick. I mean, you have to take all of this with a grain of salt. Juanita's trying, I, I guess she brings receipts here. Um, so she says, but there's a community note as well. She says, this POS dictator Zelensky has put Tucker Carlson on a kill list for interviewing Vladimir Putin. Biden has helped him with your tax dollars. And Kat Turd says, this should, this should disqualify this corrupt POS from getting another dime from this country, uh, from, from the United States. And the reader's note says, the mentioned list is not a kill list. It's not and never has been maintained by the government of Ukraine and has contained T Car Tucker Carlson for months. Listen, Tucker Carlson was added months ago, okay? And it's not really a kill list. It's just Zelensky's personal stress relief list, okay? This is a real, like, I don't know if this is actually a real interview. It seems like it's edited, but my goodness, I can't, like, this looks real-ish. It's probably fake, but I've got a joke to go with it. So we're going to watch it for a minute. This is end wokeness. Oh no, I don't want to do that. Um, end wokeness says the same people furious at Tucker Carlson for interviewing a world leader are fine with this. This maybe this is real. CNN interviews Zelensky. Um, <laughs> to read or to listen to music or something. To oh, sorry. I've got to back it up a bit. She's asking like, what's your day like? Do you have stress relief? Right. And she's the the camera is really weird because they're walking and they're zooming in on her face and his chest and it's like it's like watching uh, Eliminate. I don't know if Omni One was your your bag back in the what early twenty teens, but Eliminate was a was a thing. It, it's like an Eliminate episode, but just with Zelinsky and a CNN reporter. Do you do anything for your to yourself? Are you ever able to take a minute to to read or to listen to music or something to sort of give yourself that uh, a moment? I have such moments, important, to be in silence, to be alone. And early, early in the morning, when there are no sounds, and sounds no people know it. I add Tucker Carlson to my kill list. <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> It's a long way to go for a Tucker Carlson to my kill list joke. Um, Liz is talking about why this interview is interview is going to be a bombshell. I don't know. I, I haven't control F'd Hillary Clinton, but basically they're talking biolabs or, and I haven't control F'd biolabs yet either. So maybe I'll do that after I finish recording the show. But this guy's talking about how biolabs are going to be a thing that's going to pop up in this interview and it's going to be, you know, shattering, earth shattering. Oh my gosh. Also, there is speculation that there's going to be some kind of false flag or some kind of event today that's going to overshadow the Tucker Carlson Putin interview. I don't know. I don't know if it's that big a deal. Do you think it's that big a deal? Let me know. I think I think the Tucker Carlson interview is going to go off without a hitch and then there won't be a new thing that happens. The Tucker Carlson thing will just kind of stand on its own. And I don't think anything is going to change. I don't think anybody's going to go, <gasps> Putin said what? And then like lead to massive. I don't think that's going to happen. But Hey, maybe I'd, I'd love to be wrong. I'd love to like Putin say something that's so incendiary that it makes a huge change and like Joe Biden's government collapses. Like that would be that would be something to see, wouldn't it? But I don't expect that to happen. Here's biolabs in the US. Maybe Hillary Clinton gets arrested. That would be something to see, wouldn't it? <laughs> Is it November 4th? Here we go. In the United States under Barack Obama, Dick Lugar, 2007, they have grown exponentially ever since. They were developing uh, pathogens, diseases, to a lot of the legal documentation that I've seen. I've seen the, the Pentagon documents. I've seen the slides. I've seen 
uh, the implications that the U.S. AID, CIA, the Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, the Soros Organization, the Open Society Foundation, uh, all of these big foundations that were globalist, Bill Gates's Project 201, all, the Russians have all of the documentation and the fingerprints and their, their, their participation in this and their funding this, as well as Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, uh, and a variety of other groups that were in Ukraine, uh, you know, using all of this research to then send back to uh, Fort Detrick that that found its way in Wuhan. So uh, a lot, all of this originally was established by the United so, States under Barack. So, and I mean, Canada's got ties to Wuhan as well. So, it'll be interesting if any of that comes up. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to check it out. We'll we'll see. I'll probably let you know tomorrow, but maybe the next day too. Um, but. Hello everyone, thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.